We'll hear from the guru of Fleetwood Mac, Mick Fleetwood, when Timothy White's Rock Stars returns. On 100.7 WMMS, the buzzard rules Cleveland. And now back to Rock Stars. Here's Timothy White in conversation with Mick Fleetwood. What fires me is playing behind someone that does just that, inspires you and moves you. And I've been lucky, and also I know that my standards are, I would think, really rather high in terms of knowing when I'm not playing with someone that just doesn't happen to have that certain something and through no fault of their own. I think you were 15 when your dad bought you a, a set of drums. Was it a birthday gift that you asked your dad for it? or I just wanted to be a drummer from probably when I was about eight years old. I had this thing, about, I like to be a drummer. And I used to collect these drum catalogs, send away for premier drum catalogs. And I had this big thing that was sellotaped with little sections that went in here and it went on forever and it ended up sort of about this fat. It was my obsession. I just wanted this thing and then eventually, yes I did, I was given a small drum kit called a Gigster drum kit. It was literally one step away from being a toy. You know, it did have calf skins, it had a symbol about sort of four inches across and just had a snare drum and a hi-hat and a bass drum and one tiny little tom-tom that looked like a tambourine. That's how I learned to play drums, playing to records. I think anybody who, who's played an instrument knows how exciting it used to be to look at all those old catalogs. Oh, you know, yeah. All the old Ludwig and Swirling and Salivating. Premier and yeah. Yeah. Dreaming. All that great shiny hardware yeah. was amazing. That was what I was totally uh, involved in. As I said, I, I wasn't playing drums then. And now, where it came from, I don't know. I think it was my father. He used to tap on money in his pocket. <laughs> like that. And at uh, parties, used to play glasses with different levels of water oh, really? in the officer's mess. You well, know. with sticks, sir? Yeah, you know, just... And it wasn't until uh, my father went upstairs, passed away, that my mother gave me a picture, a wonderful picture, of Daddy sitting on, uh, very much like a picture of me, weirdly enough, of, of me and my first drum kit, sitting on the edge of a chair, because I didn't have a drum stool playing this little thing. But he was then uh, a pilot officer. He was in Scotland. This is in the RAF. Yeah, and my mother gave me this lovely picture of Daddy playing a full traps kit, which he never told me that he did, ever. I've got it in my bedroom, obviously, because it's very precious. And there he is, he's playing away on, on drums. So somewhere in there, it was maybe a little bit of destiny that I, I took to the skins. Listening to Timothy White's Rock Stars. We heard Tusk from the album of the same name, and before that, The Chain off Rumors. Still to come, some live Fleetwood Mac. Also, bassist John McVie talks about his struggle with alcoholism. When the Fleetwood Mac edition of Rock Stars continues. 100.7 WMMS. <laughs> And now, Fleetwood Mac bass player John McVie on Timothy White's Rock Stars. Mick and I are obviously old, old, old friends. And we work well together. You never saw any reason to quit. Because that's what we do, and it just happens that it is Fleetwood Mac. And praise the Lord, it's been successful. In the 
these uh, intervening years between Mirage and Tango in the Night, was it hard not being able to tour? I mean, something that you missed in a painful way? Yes. From 1963 up until four and a half, maybe five years ago, that's all I did. And Mick and Christine. It was just tour and make an album, then you tour and make an album, and you tour. And vacations come in between, mm. like maybe five weeks instead of five years. Right, it just sat around and that didn't help my alcohol problem any, which has since stopped, but sat in St. Thomas for a long time and being a, a duty-free island. For 298, you can, <laughs> you can get well twisted. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it turned into a constant problem, which uh, I'm trying to beat now. What made you adopt this more healthful lifestyle that you have now? Because I had a seizure, alcohol-induced seizure. Uh, which scared me, scared my wife, and it was time to stop. Plus, it was destroying everything. You know, there's nothing constructive comes out of being an alcoholic. Has there ever been um, a project or a certain thing that uh, uh, you would have liked to have seen the band done? Yeah. We had the ball rolling to go to Russia. This is six years ago, to the point where the, our tour manager went to Russia to meet with the authorities and then we thought we were going and for various reasons that fell through. That would have been exciting. I'd like to have seen that. But overall it's been a pretty good trip. Sure, it still is. Don't Stop, Fleetwood Mac from the 1977 Rumors album. This is Timothy White's Rock Stars. We also heard Oh Well, a song originally on the 1969 album, Then Play On. That was the live version recorded in 1979. Stevie Nicks reveals how she rewrote the hit Seven Wonders by mistake and why she decided to check into the Betty Ford Clinic. Coming up next on the Fleetwood Mac edition of Rock Stars.